Well, hello and welcome to our next video. Um, before we get started, there is one mistake that I did. It's not a huge one, but still, I would like to correct it. Um, we have installed Nodemon as a normal dependency, when in reality we want it to be a dev dependency. So we're going to be using Nodemon only on our development machine, and we don't want to use it in production. So for those reasons, let's actually remove it from the package.json, save the file, then open the terminal, and then add yarn add dash um, dash dev, and then the nodemon name. Okay, and now as you can see, it has been added as a dev dependency, meaning um, it won't be installed on the production machine once you deploy the API in case you, you do it. Okay, so that said, um, let's continue where we um, s where we left off. So what we want to do in this tutorial is to use our promises based um, two methods that we have over here and actually turn them into a sync await because we want to use a sync await and the sooner we do it, um, we don't need then later on to, to refactor the codes. So similarly as I've done in the previous video, I'm going to make a copy of them using the async await so you can get a sense of like what's different this time and then we'll, we will of course get rid of them altogether. So to get started I'm going to again make an index here this time, however, the function um, should be async. So we, we need to have an async keyword um, before the parameters. So it will be something like this. We have async um, request response next, and then a fat arrow here, and then like before. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm pretty sure you are aware of this, but just um, to, to so I can sleep better. And um, what I'm doing here is basically the same as function um, request response next, like this. Okay. This is just like a shorthanded notation using the ES6 called fat arrow, and um, yeah, that that's the thing. So if you don't like this notation, you can use this one, and then you would need to type async function like this. But I suggest you use this one because it's um, faster to type and there is no need to repeat yourself by typing the function keyword all over the place. So with that done, inside of this function we now have access to a keyword called await. And I'll explain what it does on this example over here. So what are we actually doing here? We're calling the find method on our um, user model. And the problem with this one was this isn't something that will be instantly done because it will actually need to contact the MongoDB and fetch data from it. So we can think of actions like, like those um, that they'll take some time that we don't know how long in reality. So the reason why we had to use promises or callback for that matter is we wanted to tell um, to tell the model to fetch all the users, but we don't know how long that's going to take. So instead, we say, "Oh, after it's done, let's do something." Because of that, um, you can't really use this without using callbacks and promises, S and that's um, that's why there is this await keyword. So using the await keyword, we can do the following: we can say await user.find, again same method, same parameters, everything. And what this line of code will do is it will actually await this method to return before moving moving here, for example. So the user flow could be something like this. So you could have like console log um, function started with this. Then we can await and then console.log uh, function ended. So um, the, the JavaScript uh, after this line gets executed, it will come to this line. But this is a promise, and because of that, it won't simply like go to the function ended. 
but instead it will await this. If you didn't use await, it will print function started, um, call this, but, but don't finish it, and then it will immediately call the function ended, and this promise will get lost. So that's that's what await allows us to use. Um, it basically allows us to use these long run running actions that return promises in a sync like manner. So the code will be much easier and if you have any experience using Java, C Sharp, Python for that matter, stuff like that, this code once complete will look much similar to those languages than this one for example. So what we need to do here? Well, we have this function that returns users. As you can see here, we, we eventually got a list of users. So we know that there are that this is going to return users, so we need to catch it basically and store those users in some variable. So let's declare one. Let's declare const users like before equals this, but of, but of course don't forget the await keyword here. So await this. So, just to repeat one more time, what's going on is JavaScript execution will come to this 15th line. Um, it will say, okay, user model, find me all the users. This action will take some time. We will await until it's done. After it's done, the return value of this will get stored in this users um, variable over there, and then the execution will continue on line 16. So now that we have users, we can simply do as we did previously. We can respond back with them. So I can say res status of 200 JSON users. Now what about error handling? Before we had this dot catch that catched all errors um, that were like that could have, have happened up above. When using a sync await, we need to use a try catch block. Again, if you're familiar with Java, with Java, this will be really familiar. But if not, don't fret it. Um, it's th this is what we need to do. Basically, we need to um, type try, and then something, catch, error in this case, and then something. What we want to do is to try to do this, basically, like this. And if there are some errors. We want to catch them and do as we did earlier with next next and pass the error object like this. So this should um, read much um, much clearer than this one because we don't have those unnecessary indentations this time and it's much easier to the eye I would argue. So let's do um, similar with our new user function maybe a little quicker this time. Um, we'll say new user um, async again, so request response next, again fat arrow function. Then what we did previously, well this uh, this doesn't return a promise, we can simply do it like we did previously. And then the new user.save is actually um, that long running ta task. So um, this time um, we'll do a similar thing. So we'll catch a user that gets returned by this um, function. So const user equals new user dot save. Okay, and again, don't forget the wait keyword. Await. Okay. Then we can uh, what we did previously. Well, we responded back with that user. So let's do just that. Respond status of 201 because the user just got created, and then we will simply send the user down to the client. Again, we need to catch any errors that might have happened. So again, let's use try, um, try catch. Okay, we will simply cut this piece of code up above here okay and in case of an error let's do this okay now I can get rid of this and let's test to see if this works by the way um, you need to have a node version of sorry a node version of 7.6.0 and above for this to work natively if you don't, there is a workaround where we can use um, so-called harmony flags, but now that this is um, in the node package, a better option would be to just install a newest version.
with that said let's actually try and start it of course I have my postman over here so let's try the get request and everything works let's check the terminal to make sure everything is okay great so I can get I can um, post it should remember this I can post everything is fine now before I um, I mean this this um, tutorial was just like to introduce you to a single weight and in the next ones we will simply use this pattern and like finally continue to create like all the necessary methods and it will get really fun but before I quit this tutorial I want to show you some neat trick that we can use to actually avoid writing this try catch in our controllers all the time so for that we need to install another dependency so go to your terminal let's kill the server and then you would want to install um, a dependency called express dash promise dash router like this okay now we need to go actually in our routes folder and find the user.js file and now we basically want to not use the expresses router but instead the one that we just installed that is promise based and because of that it will have like a global um, try catch and we don't need to actually write um, th these ourselves but instead it will get auto catched if you want if you were to use this um, before so let's simply comment out comment out this line and simply um, declare a router again but this time we're going to require the express dash promise that dash router that we just installed okay and then we need to ex actually execute it right here like this um, apart from that everything else will stay the same and now everything should be still good okay and if I send and I check okay now I just want to demonstrate before I get rid of this try catch to actually make sure that we are not losing that functionality so let's let's come to the index right here and let's make uh, let's like artificially throw a new error just so we can see this thing in action okay so let's say throw new error and we'll simply say uh, name it dummy error for example like this okay so now whenever we we send a get request to to root um, we should actually get this error in our console so um, server is listening okay so now let's use postman remember it needs to be a get request so let me do this and send and you can see the error as we expected and if you scroll up above um you can s okay 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 this error is actually because we actually already responded and then the express complained that you can't do anything else because it was already like sent but if I simply move this line before this one like this and let's try the same thing once again okay I come here I click send as you can see we get error dummy error over here okay so we now are at least um, confident that this try catch is working as expected so now if I remove it okay and we um, we lean on the fact that we uh, did replace like default router with this one and I said to you that it already contains that error catching mechanism without us needing to like explicitly define it here let's see if we um, get the same error so the server has been restarted and I'm going to send again this and as you can see we get the same error as we did previously but this time we didn't need to include this additional um, syntax so that's pretty awesome because as you can see bit by bit we're making our controllers much easier to work with so now I can confidently remove this and this and simply indent this properly and now we have a really sync looking code that is otherwise async 
Um, that should be it for this tutorial. So now we kind of did this. I'll make a little check mark over there. And so, like I said, in, in the next tutorials, we will actually write more methods here, do the validation, and it will be fun. So I'll see you in the next one.